Hello, my name is Matt Rabel and this is a quick overview of how the UI works in a microservices architecture when using jhipster. So I have this JDL file that defines a gateway, a blog, and a store application. I'm going to start by downloading that. And then I'll open up a terminal window, create a directory, and then create my applications using import JDL. So that created three applications. You can see there's a blog, a gateway, and a store. The gateway is where all the UI code is contained. The blog and the store are back-end microservices. So if we went into store, for instance, and look at its package.json, it just has generator jhipster. And that is so it can generate entities in the back-end using jhipster. So I'll go ahead and start all these, but before I do that, I'm going to go into gateway and start some essential services. Since we're using OAuth 2 for authentication, we need to start Keycloak. And then we'll also need to start the jhipster registry for service discovery. And then the store application has a MongoDB database, so we'll need to start that as well. Now we can start each individual application. So we'll start the store there. And we'll start the blog and the gateway. And while that's running, I'm going to open up the store just to show you the code. If you were to look at the source main directory, there is no web app directory, right? There is no web app in here. If you go to static, there is an index.html that has a basic page that says it's a microservice. There is no front end. Under Java, there is a product endpoint for that entity that we have in there. So you can see. API products goes to creating a product when you post to it. Also look at the gateway. So if you look at source main web app here, that's where all the UI code lives. So if we go into app entities, that's where the blog is, that's where the store is. So if we look at store and particularly the service, You'll see that it goes to the server's API URL, services, store, and then API products. So this prefix is actually configured with Zool. So Zool knows to forward that request to that backend microservice. But you can see all of the UI components are on that front end gateway. So now we'll open it up in our browser. We can go to localhost 8080. Then you can sign in. It'll redirect us to Keycloak. Enter admin admin. Then you can see all the entities are right here. If we hit blog, it goes to that back end. Of course, we could edit it, change any of the values. That all works. And if we went to store or the product, you can see there are no products found, but we could add a new one. Let's say bread and save it. And that's all working. So I hope you enjoyed this brief tour of how the UI code is located or where it's located in the jhipster app. If you go to jhipster.tech, you can find out more information about jhipster and how great it is for generating microservices and monoliths with Java and a JavaScript front end. Thanks for watching.